Welcome, welcome, welcome. Paul Plant Parent here. Let's talk about some plants, shall we? <laughs> this week I wanted to show you the progress I've been uh, receiving from some of these plants that you have seen recently. Um, I also want to show you some issues and um, some other stuff. So anyway, <laughs> let's start out with the big purple elephant in the room. This is the Phalaenopsis that was in Spike a couple of videos ago. It has started blooming. Now, just to give you perspective, if you haven't been following along, this orchid was in a dark room. I have two of them that are about this size and they were in a dark room. No feed, no water, very, very little light. I gave them a break. Um, I didn't water them for a while. Then I said, all right, it's time. I took them out, gave them some plain water first, just to get them started, put them in a bright room by a south facing window and boom, started to get a spike, which now is flowers. I love, look at this lip here, dark colored lip, but look inside there. It has yellow um, with spots on it. It's just really cool. Um, this plant is in nothing but a vase. So I guess you can call this um, semi-water culture. I let it dry out and then I give it some feed now. I'll show you what the roots look like up close. Very, very crazy roots, very healthy roots for the most part. I mean, there's some in there that I could remove and cut off some of the dried up ones, but I'm also using, if you could see it at the bottom there, see a little pellet there? This is Nutricoat, which is a an orchid. Well, it's also for, um, for orchids and for uh, tropicals, but it is a slow release that orchids can handle. It's got the uh, micronutrients, so it is gonna be doing just fine. And look what I just found, guys, a scale. Do you see that right there? Let me make sure you're in, let me bring it up. I see a scale right there. So I'm gonna rip that off. And now, because of this, I need to do a deeper dive. Let me get it off my finger first. I just wanna do a deeper dive to see if there's anything else I should be aware of. Oh, I see another one, look at that. So I'm gonna to have to clean this plant off, wipe it down, spray it with some alcohol because I don't like scale, but it's not infested or anything. Oh, wait a minute, I spoke too soon. Here's another one here. Yep, we've got some scales here. Luckily, this plant is not in the middle of all the other plants, so I should be able to treat it without any issue. But yeah, I don't even know, like where do they come from? This, this plant has been by itself for so long. There must have been like one or two on there that kind of survived, and now they are uh, starting to take off now that the plant is taking off, I'm assuming. There's a lot of sap on here too, so I don't know if it's the happy sap, or I don't know if it has to do with the scale, but I will clean it off really well and I will treat it make sure it's okay but anyway look at this I just think this is so cool I remember now when I received this plant when I got it it was I, I always thought wow these flowers are not as big as some of the phalaenopsis that I've usually seen and some of the ones that I've had but um but I don't mind it I think it's actually kind of kind of cute if you could see I'm getting, trying to get closer so yep, first bloom is open, second bloom is about to open completely, and then we have a bunch more. So I'm excited. The other orchid that I have is in acrylic. It's also kind of like in a similar semi-water culture where I let the, the roots and everything dry up, but it has the acrylic in there. It's still in spike, has not opened up blooms yet. So that's gonna be the next one. We'll do a video on that one as soon as that one comes to bloom. Um, but yeah, I just wanna make sure I showed you this because it was such a fun, little experiment of putting it in a dark room, letting it dry up, kind of letting it rest a little bit because it hadn't bloomed in a while. And I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna find a way to force this thing to bloom. And I sure enough, I did. So that is that. Yeah, I definitely gotta clean off these leaves. I'm like worried about having scale. Um, yeah, I think there's a lot more than I even saw. So I will take care of that, but I'm gonna move this out of the picture so nothing else gets infested with the scale. Okay, moving on. This plant here is one of my absolute favorites. It's a small little plant, doesn't look like much, right? But if you touch the leaves, it smells like lemon verbena. 
This is another Plectranthus, one of my favorite type plants, one of my favorite genera. Plectranthus in the mint family. Um, as you probably know, and I've, I've featured them before, uh, related to, very closely related to the Vix plant, um, the Mona lavender that, that's really known for its blooms, and a bunch of other Plectranthus. But this one smells like lemon, like, oh, delicious, like lemon drop candy. It is, I can't stop touching it. I have to keep this away from me, like, during the week because I won't stop touching it and I'll ruin all the leaves because it just smells so good. Um, even though it's a basic plant, the leaves have their own charm to them. They have these veins, you could see they've got toothed edges. Um, you could see they're semi-succulent, kind of thick, and it will grow into like a woody base. This one was, um, I don't want to say dormant, but it really wasn't doing much of anything for a while. So I changed up the uh, location. I put it under LED lights. I started giving it some, uh, some different feed, and now it's starting to grow. It grew about almost two inches in like two weeks, so like an inch a week, let's say. So that has been exciting. And oh my God, the smell is so good. It really smells just like lemon verbena, which is just like lemon drop candy. So good. So yeah, that's Plectranthus. These guys uh, usually do good in very bright indirect light. Some species of Plectranthus can deal with um, direct sunlight, but I'm not gonna do that to this one at least because I'm so paranoid. I, I want this to survive. When it gets a little bigger, I'm gonna chop it, prop it, make some more, and have this branch out and become like a little tree. And um, yeah, I just, I collect Plectranthus because I love, love, love them. I have so many different varieties, kind of like, um, my peperomia. I gotta stop collecting plants, guys. I don't know. What am I doing? Why am I collecting so many plants? Because <laughs> they make me happy. That's why. There you go. Um, yeah, and it's a harmless obsession, right? Until it starts to take over the house. But we're almost there. But, uh, but anyway, I just love this plant. Leaves are very, very soft and they smell fantastic. Plectranthus lemon leaf. I don't even know if there is a cultivar name for this because I only found this from one seller and it's called Lemon Leaf um, and it's uh, Plectranthus Lemon Leaf and I don't know what the actual species name is. I would love to find out because the smell is heavenly. Even the dry leaves, they maintain that fragrance. So if a leaf dries off, you know, usually when, it, when leaves dry up and they die, you take them off and throw them away. I've been saving them only because I don't want to throw away that scent. It's so nice. So yeah, I keep the leaves just because I like to smell them. I know I'm crazy. It's okay. It's all right, guys. All right, so that's Plectranthus. All right, this is the coleus. If you guys have been following that I've featured a bunch of times, it's been living in acrylic yarn for, oh, I don't even know how long it's been. I don't know if it's been a year, if it's less than a year, more than a year. I don't know. This was a little cutting I just stuck in here. I didn't even fill this up with enough of the acrylic yarn. It's only like up till here because I was just putting a cutting in here for like the time being, when now it's like it's permanent home for now, at least. The stem down at the base is very woody. And uh, the reason why I'm featuring this is not because uh, of that, it's because something is eating it. Look at that bite. Do you see that bite in that leaf? There's a hole in that leaf. There's also a hole in this leaf right here. I don't know what this is, because this is indoors. I don't see any like caterpillar poop or anything like that. So I don't know what's eating this, but there is something eating it. And I'm gonna get to the bottom of it. So yeah, I just wanna show you that because, and this here, look, look, more bites. What, oh wait, you can't see it right here. What is eating this plant? I have not found anything on here, but I'm gonna keep a close eye because I don't want nobody eating my plants unless it's me and I even, don't like eating my own plants, uh, even if they're edible. All right, so this is the coleus, um, south-facing window, acrylic yarn, no feed, just kind of like doing its thing. <laughs> it was just a cutting, now it's a plant. Anyway, that's that. All right, moving on. Let's move on to this one. Okay, this is my beautiful Hoya Semper Florens. This is the Hoya that blooms constantly. Now, it had a peduncle that was blooming continuously like it would stop blooming and then it would start blooming as soon as the, as the last blossom fell it would start blooming again on the same peduncle something happened i don't know exactly what it was maybe it um maybe the soil was too dry i don't really know exactly what it was but 
it dropped that peduncle, which was about this long. So you could tell it had bloomed a lot. But I said, all right, let me just keep watering it. I put in some slow release fertilizer, those little pellets that are in there. You can't really see them. But anyway, slow release fertilizer. And sure enough, a new peduncle developed very quickly and started budding up and it just started opening. I love these shooting stars. They're just so cool looking. Let me get closer so you guys can see it. Look at this. They're just such cool flowers. I love it, love it, love it. By the way, I also ordered, just uh, since we're having plant conversations, because I love talking to you guys because I'm lonely. No, I'm kidding. Um, no, I just love talking about plants, and this is the one place I can definitely do that. I also ordered something that is a Florida native, and a lot of people grow them in their yards in Florida and in southern states for the butterflies, for monarchs, queens, soldiers, all those types of kind of tropical butterflies. Um, and it is called twine vine. It's a type of milkweed, but it looks like a Hoya, very similar to a Hoya, and it blooms consistently and regularly, and it grows super duper fast. And I want it because I want to see the flowers and I want to see if they have a fragrance because I love flowers that smell good. Let me see if these do. These sometimes would have a nice fragrance, but at night, like at one in the morning, like midnight or one in the morning, they start to smell really good. The last few bloom cycles, I didn't have a fragrance, but before that, it was regularly giving me this really nice fragrance. Hopefully it'll happen again. But anyway, this is, um, this is that Hoya. And as soon as I get that twine vine, I will definitely do a video to show you guys what that looks like. But get a load of these flowers. I love this. Like shooting stars. I think they also call the shooting star Hoya or something like that. Look at that. It's just the coolest thing. Just very unique. I mean, Hoya flowers are always very unique, but Semper Florens is definitely more unique than anything, as far as I'm concerned. It's my opinion. This here is nothing major. I just wanted to show you what, um, uh, <laughs> what mealy bu bug damage can do to your Hoyas. If you haven't had the pleasure of having uh, mealy bugs on your Hoyas, this is what could potentially happen. The growth point had some um, some Hoya, had <laughs> some uh, mealy bugs that started to eat the new growth that was coming out because it's tender and supple and juicy. And my camera is not focusing. Can you see that? Okay, so look at that leaf. That's like all deformed. Even this one is deformed. I don't think I have any more issues with mealy bugs right now on here but they always find their way to the plant, so I'm not gonna say that it's not gonna happen. But I love this, this happens a lot with, this is a um, Crimson Queen, I believe, because it's outer variegated. If it was the inner variegated, that would be Crimson Princess. Every once in a while, on both Princess and Queen, you'll get these sports that are completely white that cannot survive on their own, but I, as long as they're attached to the plant, they can survive for a while. So I'm leaving this attached. I just think, whoa, it's cool, you know? But if I were to remove this and try to grow this on its own, as its own, cultivar it most likely will not survive because i've tried it it didn't work but on a plant that does have some green leaves to make food it's just fine and these have been there for a while so it's not like it's new and they may die soon i mean they may die soon but th these have been on here for a few months already so uh this is an acrylic yarn and doing just fine slow grower probably because there's not a lot of chlorophyll here but I still think it's kind of cute with that white uh center there so yeah, Crimson Queen Hoya in acrylic yarn. Moving on, let's go to another Hoya. This here is, um, I think this is, actually I'm not even 100% sure what type of Hoya this is, but it looks like some type of a Carnosa. Again, there is just light splash on it, but I'm not sure. I don't think this came with an ID. This was a small cutting that I had gotten as like an extra with another order. And so I just kind of stuck it in some yarn, some acrylic, not wool, acrylic yarn. You see all those roots? Look at them. Go in there. It's been doing just fine. It's grown a lot. And I forgot about it a few times. Didn't water it, it was bone dry. But once you start watering it again, it picks up where it left off. So that's that. Again, I'm not exactly sure, but it looks like some type of Carnosa. If you know from looking at this, if you could tell what this is, then first of all, more power to you. Second of all, let me know. Um, again, it looks like a Carnosa. Let me get close as you can see these leaves with the splash. 
don't know if you could see it. Anyway, it's a water stain on there. So yeah, that is this Hoya. And last but not least, we have up here my Nemecanthus, which is the goldfish plant. Now this is an epiphyte, and I told you it was getting ready to bloom, and the bloom has not yet opened, but it's almost there. So I wanted to show you this. Look at how this looks. It's pendulous, it hangs below the plant, and it's like a little trumpet, but it hasn't opened yet. It's getting ready to open soon. I just think it's such a cool, whoa, <laughs> did you see that? It's such a cool um, flower, how it hangs below everything, and it'll open up kind of like this, like a trumpet below the plant. I just think this is really, really cool. Wait a minute, is it open? No, not yet. Very excited about that. Looks like there was another one here. I don't know if this is, oh yeah, this is good. I thought this was a dried up one. There's a new bloom getting ready to uh, to open up here or at least to start growing right there. And I think that's it so far. Ooh, sorry guys, I just moved you. I just found one here. There's one up here too. See that little baby there? That one might not make it. It looks like it could be dry. Let me see. Yep, it came right off. It was dry. Boo hoo. But anyway, we have two that we're working with now. And uh, I cannot wait for this to open up. I'll do another video once it opens so you guys can actually see what the flower looks like. We'll look inside to see if there's anything cool in there. But um, just such a cool bloom. I also love the underside of the leaves. They have this big red patch underneath that doesn't go to the very edge of the leaf. There's just a, like a green outline, which I think is kind of cool also. Because most of the, the plants that you see that have like a red or purple underside, it's usually the entire underside of the leaf that's that color, but not this plant. It has um, green on the edges. So it's almost like outlined in green, which I think is very cool. And shiny, almost Hoya-like from the top view. And it's also very woody at the base. So again, this is another epiphyte, just like Hoyas are, and um, also like lipstick plants. And they are um, very easy. This is African Violet Relative, just like Escananthus, which is a lipstick plant, and African violets, all that sort of stuff, all in the same family. Streptocarpus. Um, yeah. So that is that. That's it. That's all I got, guys. See, there's so many more things I want to talk about, but I don't want to bore you guys. Um, maybe I'll do another video. Uh, but yeah, if you have any questions on any of these plants, um, or if you want to know how I'm going to handle this uh, this whole situation here with the <laughs> with those scales which are, they're not the bane of my existence. The bane of my existence are the mealybugs. Those I can definitely do without, and they are just really, really tough. They're tough to deal with. The scales, they're not as mobile, 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 as some other pests, so I probably will be able to take care of that, but I just need to keep an eye on it because I don't want to sacrifice these blooms. Very pretty. And the next one that starts blooming, I will show you that too, but I have to check that one because it's next to this one. Those are the only two plants in the area so there may be some scale on that one too. But for now, we'll just enjoy this one, right? Really pretty. Anyway, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Hit that bell if you want to be notified, and I will see you in the next video.